The Magic Roundabout was a series of short stop-motion animations that were aired in both the UK and France in the 60s and the 70s. Uh, the episodes in the UK were redubbed by the BBC, so they bared little story in common with the original French versions. Despite this, the show became a bit of a cult classic. Overall, there were around 441 episodes made, and at 5 minutes apiece, that clocks up to around 37 or so hours of this. There's no time for pleasantries, said Dougal. You are late. We've got a lot to do, and you're late. If you were in a union, I'd sack you. Now pull yourself together and concentrate on the working hand. So, because I don't feel like watching all that and reviewing it myself, I decided to talk about this instead. Oh, ho, ho, it's magic. Yep, they made a movie out of it. 2005. Legend has it that instead of the French and the British trying to outdo one another as God intended, a production company from each country respectively decided to work together to make a film. Whether because they both wanted to make the film, or perhaps to show that we could work together for once instead of fight, or perhaps to challenge nature itself to overcome the force that is the mutual hatred of each other's country. Whatever the reason, they made this, a film that sits at 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. I watched it a couple of times when I was a kid, and there were some things I really enjoyed, naturally because kids have a tendency to find enjoyment in things that adults find boring as shit, but coming back to this with my older and wiser critical eye, it does fall apart in places and has tropes aplenty. So let's dig in! We start out at night with a spring man running... Um. Hopping? Bouncing. Bouncing for his life. Trying to escape from Mr. Freeze. Before he gets away, though, he gets zapped off a cliff and comes face to face with our villain, who zaps him with... Mustache. Magic. Sure, why the fuck not? Turns out it's just a bad dream, and Red Spring Man is fine in his weird vortex house. He gets up, has a stretch, and shows us the opening credits. Yeah, this is the one with French titles. I don't have the DVD and this is the full version that's available on YouTube. So, you know, it, it's on YouTube. I ain't no pirate, it's, it's on YouTube. So now we get to meet our characters. And after watching a few episodes of the original show, I can tell you they're pretty close to the UK version of the characters. We've got Dog, nice as all dogs are, but addicted to sugar and a bit of a selfish dick. The opera singing cow, who's very self-centred. The snail that looks like he's made of fabric, who's got a mega crush on the cow. And this rabbit, who is definitely high the entire film. Whoa, don't toast the hamsters, dude. Also there's... Ugh! Ah! Oh god, why? Why? Get that away. Ugh. I get that's what she kinda looked like in the original show, but ah! Uh, back to the story. Dog is trying to get his sugar fix for the day, but our resident nightmare here wants him to stay and watch the stage performance by the cow. In the middle of the performance, Dog manages to sneak away while this goes on. Yeah, I'll get into this later. So, Dog pops a tire of the Candyman's bike car with a magic pin, and the chef guy has to go and get help. While the chef is gone, he jumps onto the bike and accidentally starts it making it go haywire and eventually crash into the roundabout. Then the roundabout explodes and starts to spin fast and freeze as a blue spring man jumps out, trapping the kids inside. Yeah, this film wastes no time. Ugh, three fingers. Ugh, she's got three fingers. It just gets worse the more you look at it. So, roundabout's frozen and the blue spring guy got out. What on earth shall we do? Zebedee! 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 What's the matter, my friend? I don't know, maybe it's the giant frozen roundabout behind you that you somehow missed coming down from your weird time vortex house? Who explains that the blue spring guy is evil and needs to be stopped? It turns out the blue guy is the evil moustache magic guy from earlier that Red was worried about. Free! At last! It took 10,000 years, but the best things are worth waiting for. Power! Revenge! And, uh... More power! I'm just gonna say it now. 
This guy is great. Whoever voices him just chews the fucking scenery and I love it. Blue finds a wooden soldier that broke off the roundabout with him and decides he needs a henchman. Today, one soldier. Tomorrow, the world. And then perhaps three more soldiers. He brings it to life and the film does the music thing again. <laughs> Sergeant Sam, 1st Decorative Clockwork Regiment, sir! Good. Ooh. From now on, your mission is to help me recover three diamonds taken from me by a treacherous thief. Then he explains that he needs to find three diamond MacGuffins, because when you don't know what's right, you just write three MacGuffins for the characters to find. Red also explains that to our characters, and he tells them to go find the diamonds, explaining that he must stay behind and guard the one hidden on the roundabout. He also gives him a train and spits out one-liners. I wonder where we're going. I wonder if they even know. I wonder if they know that I don't even know. What a ridiculous train of thought. And so the journey begins. Google? Yeah. You mustn't feel guilty just because it's all your fault. Me? Oh, sorry. It didn't come out right. What did I do? What, apart from wrecking the roundabout, trapping Florence and the children, and causing the escape of a maniac intent on freezing the sun? I only wanted to get my teeth into some sweeties. Maybe you got, like, a problem? Jesus Christ, everyone in this film is a fucking asshole. Anyway, after everyone collectively agrees to blame the dog, they decide to stop the night and set up camp, leaving Dog to keep watch because none of them like him, because he trashed the roundabout, and it's all his fault they might die. While on watch, he wanders off and bumps into a moose. And Evil Blue Spring, who transitions us to the next scene, where our characters are looking for him. They bump into the moose and interact with British amounts of banter between them. Have you seen our friend Dougal? Big black nose. Looks like a bad hair day on lads. You're wasting your time, Brian. Who ever heard of a talking moose? Says the opera singing cow. The moose invites them to follow him and shows them the way to Blue's lair. Shaped like his head, of course, as all proper villain's lairs should be. Here we find that Blue is interrogating Dog, finding out about the map given to them by Red. So who does have the map? I'll never tell. Sam, what? stop mincing around with that duster. Torture this boarding house for fleas until he tells us everything. Yes, sir. <laughs> Right in. Torture. Look, this is all a bit new to me, so, um, what is it you're most afraid of? Um... I love this guy. He's just so wholesome. Anyway, the team rescue the dog by lowering down the cow. Because... comedy, I guess. And start to make their escape. She looks a lot better from this angle. She look a lot better when she's being served with a side order of fries. But then, as our heroes make their escape, the writers got bored and decided we needed another musical scene. <laughs> Naturally, the slide ends at a cliff and all our heroes are cornered. So what do they do? Nobody can save you now! Zebedee! 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 Summoned Red Spring, and so an epic fight ensues. Ending with Blue getting knocked off the cliff. Yay, he's defeated, story over, we can go home. But we're only 25 minutes in, so you know what that means. Run! Run! Oh, no. Zebedee. It's dead. Before our heroes can do anything, Red blocks them off and sacrifices himself, calling them one last time. Get the time! This seems familiar. The voices, there's someone falling off a cliff. Oh, hold on. What? Gandalf? Red Spring is voiced by Gandalf? Right, after doing some digging, it gets better. Red Spring is voiced by Gandalf, The Stoned Rabbit is voiced by Davy Jones, Sam is voiced by fucking Beowulf, and Blue Spring is none other than Doctor Who. Oh, 
Oh, and Robbie Williams is the dog. The singer Robbie Williams, though, not legendary voice actor Robin Williams. May he rest in peace. Back to business. The cast managed to make their escape, but are all sad because Spring Gandalf died. I can't believe he's really gone. Zeb's dead, baby. Zeb's dead. No, we're gonna save our world. Now where's the map? After they recover, they find themselves at a lava level close to the first diamond. No need to panic. Now. Now is a good time to panic. Move! One somewhat tense trip across a bridge later, they're across and ready to grab the diamond. Unfortunately, the Doctor and Beowulf catch up and snag the gem on the map, breaking the bridge and leaving our heroes stranded. Chill out, guys. I've got something stashed that just might help. Dylan, we don't have time to experiment with recreational activities. Wait, does that imply the rabbit's actually known to be, like, high 24-7? Zebedee's magic box. <laughs> So naturally, the train's carriage turns into a boat, and just like someone who's probably zoinked out of their mind, Rabbit decides to make a balloon out of all their tents, helping them escape and follow Dr. Blue to the next MacGuffin. It's all about altitude over attitude, Ermin dude. Hey, if it works, it works. I ain't gonna judge. I'd like to see you get high and make a balloon out of tents and attach it to a steam train. This gives us a quiet moment with our characters, Dr. Blue being mean to Sam, the snail flirting with a cow. Is that the Milky Way, Ermintrude? Brian, you should never ask a lady anything so personal. And Blunt's Bunny saying the most relatable thing I've heard in this entire film. <gasps> oh, we should get some sleep, man. Honestly. Is that all you ever think about? Sure. Whenever I'm awake. But because the writers were playing trope roulette or something and people are falling asleep, you know what that means. Two minute long dream sequence with Mr. Blue Sky and Creepy Girl and this fucking cow singing. You see, when filmmakers do stuff like this, it's pretty much mostly for filler, because writing complex characters having a discussion is hard. So why do that when you could just have a montage? Stuff like Guardians of the Galaxy, Yellow Submarine and Baby Driver are different because they were written with music in mind. This? This was probably just an afterthought when the writers realised they needed to fill this shit out for like another 14 pages. Anyway, the dream sequence ends and our characters find themselves in a level from Donkey Kong or something, needing to get past a booby-trapped temple. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'll go. Those lazy kites, I'm the only one who does anything around here. Brian, do this, Brian, do that. Yes, sir, not for three bags both. You treat me like a slave, it's a disgrace. Where's my sugar? Where's my grass? They must think I'm a soft touch. But I always go crawling back. Oh, come on, it's all clear. <gasps> Let's go. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's a simple gag, but it still got me. Also, I love the hidden details of one of the traps being a bottle just casually thrown at whoever's intruding. Also, the train gets spooked and falls down a hole. That's kind of important later, I guess. They eventually find themselves in a throne room and are about to snag the diamond when some lasers are triggered. Someone has to get through to the diamond! Well, I'm too hairy. I got the shakes. Oh, for the love of Mozart, I'll do it! She says Mozart when Hall of the Mountain King by Greg is playing. <laughs> oh, wow, yum! That was brilliant! Unfortunately, Dog fucks up yet again and drops a gobstopper, triggering the lasers anyway. <laughs> I don't suppose anyone knows anything about martial arts? Just the basics of like kung fu, karate, judo, kendo, taekwondo, anything you can do, and tai chi. Ooh, do they come with egg fried rice? Ah, moderately racist humour. One of Britain's best exports alongside colonialism and pale holiday makers that burn in anything above 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah. And we get another music moment. Another music moment. At least we get to see some fighting in this one. 
Finally, after all that, they can grab the diamond and... Oh, what now? Yeah, yeah, fast forward. Alright, now they can get the... Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, that's over with. Still empty-handed, they decide to go back to the roundabout and find the last diamond there. They find Train, who's landed in a mine shaft, and follow the rails back. Oh yeah, and the rails act like a roller coaster because Indiana Jones did it. So every set of tracks in a film needs to be that way. But inconveniently, Slinky and Sam got in that drill train thing we saw earlier, and follow in hot pursuit, leading to a pretty exciting chase scene actually. And now I'd like to show you a clip from the film, but unfortunately that bit's got screwed by copyright, so I'm gonna have to edit it because fuck the French. Anyway, Snail gets ejected out of the train, he lands on the roof of the other train, and then he's like, oh no, I'm blind, are we at the roundabout yet? Because the writers needed him to say that at such an inconvenient time. Fortunately, the gang managed to save Snail, and the chase continues. Sir, the pressure! It's too much! I know, I know! Sometimes I feel I'm going quite insane! I swear, Zbad is just the biggest mood in this whole thing. No, sir, it's the boiler! It How convenient! <laughs> How inconvenient! The crew land safely and all start heading to the roundabout. Unfortunately they have to walk due to the train having sustained a case of damaged wheels from the fall. Back at the rails, Sam is severely injured, and the blue meanie being the blue meanie decides to leave him behind, because that's what evil people do I guess. Evil villains can be so cruel. And so our heroes struggle on, forging their way through the ice and snow till they can forge no longer, and surprisingly quickly accept their cold deaths. Which leads to, you guessed it, Nightmare Sequence! I'm sweet. You're with me now, in sugar paradise! Ugh, I, I know it's meant to be creepy, it's a nightmare sequence, but she looked creepy anyway, and now I can't help but feel those tiny eyes poking through my soul like needles. Quit, move on. Florence! No, it was just a dream. Oh, thank God, it's that moose. Anything to be out of that fucking scene. Oh, cool, that, that's cool, it's rescuing Sam. Oh yeah, and it turns out they all passed out right in front of the town, so that, that's cool, I guess. The diamond must be here somewhere. Z-Bag! You! <laughs> this roundabout ain't big enough for the both of us. Oh yeah, you do it, Sam! <laughs> Fuck him up! <laughs> well, as always, next time. <laughs> I guess not, actually. The diamond! Oh, Zebedee, you cunning swine. Finally, our heroes make it back, only to find that Blue Nose is starting to freeze the sun to the sound of 2001, A Space Odyssey. <sighs> However, Rabbit doesn't seem to be too happy with the reference and Z-Bad's bullshittery with freezing the sun seems to have pushed him a little over the edge. Take a chill pill, rabbit! Ah! Oh, Hermit Drew! Yeah! Cartoon physics for the win once again. They throw the snail and thus shenanigans ensue. Oh, and of course it's set to a song. Of course they had to have one more musical bit. But before they can grab the last diamond, Blue Balls grabs it. And well, 
the other two are in the roundabout, so the only thing you can really do is run, uh, bounce. Try, but a bunch of dumb animals. Zebedee's magic box. <laughs> yeah. It does, doesn't work! <laughs> uh, you know what, I've seen the film, so I'm just gonna edit something in real quick. Zebedee's toys can't help you now. I did this entire video just so I could do that one gag. Finally, Dog kicks the last diamond into the roundabout and the day is won. I smelt, Mr. Freeze is trapped, and hey look, Gandalf survived. Who would have guessed? Woo, that's that's cool. And so everyone celebrates. A bit prematurely though, because creepy girl that dog liked might actually be dead. Florence! Florence! My lovely Florence! Mm. Oh, she's alive! Gordon's alive! Oh, no way. She's fine. False alarm. Come on everyone! To the roundabout! <laughs> yes! To the thing we were trapped on for three actual days where I nearly died and you all thought I was dead! Such happy memories we have of this thing! So that was the magic roundabout. Overall, not actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. But the fact that it's been on YouTube for over six months now without being taken down shows how much people really care about it. I knew it was a mediocre film as I got older, but coming back to look at it, it's actually not a bad flick. It is a bit drawn out at times with the musical filler, somewhat unoriginal plot, and lead characters that are, for the most part, a bit dickish. But it's still watchable. Just be ready for a trip into the uncanny valley at times. Biggest saving grace of this film is the humour. Says the opera singing cow. No need to panic. Now. Now is a good time to panic. The fearless warrior couldn't make it today, so we came instead. Uh, we'll drop it into him on the way home. Just the jokes and off-handed comments that are made make this film worth a watch. The Goodest Boy Award goes to Sam. Even as a henchman, he's a good boy with a good diamond heart. Very generous, sir. So that's it. If you want to watch the film yourself, it's on YouTube. It's the first thing that comes up when you type in the magic roundabout. So watch it while you can. Thanks for watching, folks. I just thought I'd try my hand at something different. Tell me if you like it or not. If not, I'll probably just go back to shit posting. Alright, see you next time. Oh, and don't watch Dougal. That's the American dub and it sucks major shit.